The last topic in the meat of our course was hypothesis test. Let's take a quick review of hypothesis test before we wrap up and let you start practicing. We're going to do a lot of our calculations on Excel, so let's just use Excel to actually type out our problems. It is claimed that 10% of people own multiple docs. To test this, we take a sample of 300 people showed 7% owned multiple dogs. We're going to test this at the 5% level of confidence. So the first thing we need to do is define the hypothesis that we're going to test. Our hypothesis notation is h sub 0. Here we're testing a proportion. So we need to use p for the proportion. The claim is that proportion is equal to 0.10. For our alternative hypothesis, we're saying the proportion is not equal to 0.10. We're trying to disprove that hypothesis. And I'll do that for the not equal symbol. If this is the hypothesis we're going to test, we need to figure out what our test statistic is. For proportions, the test statistic is a z. So to calculate the z, we're going to take the proportion from our sample, which is 0 0.07, subtract the claim proportion, which is 0.10, and then we're going to divide by the square root of p, q, over n. P and Q, this is important, come from the hypothesis, not from the sample. So P is 0.10 times Q. Q is 1 minus the proportion, which is 0.9, divided by the sample size of 300 people. This tells us our test statistic is negative point or negative 1.73. After we find our test statistic, we want to know what is the P value. To find our P value, we're going to say equals with proportions. It's a normal distribution, dot s, dot dist. We'll take our z value that we just calculated. And with normal, we're always going to say true. Now, I want to be careful. That's actually half the p value because that's just the left tail. We want both tails because it's a two-tail test we said not equal to. So we're going to select that half and double it to end up with our true p-value of 0.0832. Now we're testing this at the 0.05 level of confidence. So when we get to our final conclusion, alpha is 0.05, and our p-value was bigger than alpha. When the p-value is bigger, there's too much evidence in, front, in support of the null hypothesis. So the decision we're going to make is we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. So there is not sufficient evidence, if I wanted to put an interpretation on here. There is not sufficient evidence, because we failed to reject, to conclude the alternative hypothesis that the proportion of people who own dogs, own multiple dogs, is not equal to 0 0.10. Again, the interpretation should focus on the alternative hypothesis. Let's try another example. Let's look at a sample of 40 men showed 25% of them owned multiple dogs. We're going to stick with the theme. A sample of 60 women showed 30% owned multiple dogs. We want to know, is the proportion of women who own dogs greater than the proportion of men who own dogs? Let's make a hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is going to be comparing two proportions. There's no claim other than the fact that there's a relationship between the two groups. So we're going to look at the proportion of women and say it is equal to the proportion of men. 
For the alternative hypothesis, we're trying to prove the proportion of women who own dogs, multiple dogs, is greater than the proportion of men. With that in mind, we need to find the test statistic. Actually, before we find the test statistic, we need to find a few more things about this sample. If you're looking at your formula sheet, you see we need a couple more pieces of information. First, I need to know the number of men with multiple dogs. That's going to be the 40 men and 25% of them. So I'll say 40 times 0.25. That tells me there's 10 men with multiple dogs. Women with multiple dogs. There's 60 women and 30% of them. So 60 times 0.3. 18 of them own multiple dogs. That's going to be needed to find the pooled proportion, which is the total number of successes for men plus the women, in parentheses in the numerator, divided by the total sample size of men plus the women. In other words, out of everybody, 28% of people owned multiple dogs. Once we know the pooled proportion, we can find the standard error using that standard error formula in your workbook. The standard error is equal to the square root of the pooled proportion times 1 minus the pooled proportion times 1 over the first sample size, which was 40, plus 1 over the second sample size, which was 60. We now know the standard error is 0 0.09165. All of that to finally be able to find my test statistic. The test statistic is the z value. For the test statistic, we want the proportion of women first, because the hypothesis put that first. So the women is 0 0.30 minus the proportion of men, which is 0 0.25, divided by the standard error gives me my z value of 0.54554. Now that we have our test statistic, we can find the p value. Because this is a right-tailed test, because it's a right-tailed test, we only need to do one tail. We can jump right to the p-value. Just be careful. In the right tail, we need to do 1 minus, because Excel always gives the left tail. So we'll do 1 minus norm dot standard dot distribution, select our z-value, and say true. And it's going to tell us the probability that this would happen by chance is 0.292. Two, six, nine. Let's make our conclusions. We needed to define an alpha. If there's no alpha defined, we'll just assume alpha is 0 0.05. Alpha is the smallest probability where we'll still believe the null hypothesis is true. Based on this alpha, our p-value is bigger than it. So it's too much evidence in favor of the null hypothesis. We cannot reject it. So our decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis because that p-value is too large. We only reject with a low p. In conclusion, we can say there is not, because we failed to reject, sufficient evidence to conclude the proportion of women who own multiple dogs is greater than the proportion of men who own multiple dogs. Notice again the conclusion focuses on the alternative hypothesis and whether we successfully proved it based on our decision. We've done one proportion and we've done two proportions. Let's do a hypothesis test for a mean. It is claimed that the average number of pets owned, sticking with the theme, is smaller than 3.5. A sample of 35 people had an average of 3.48 pets with a standard deviation of 0.03 at the alpha equals 0 0.01 level, can this be shown to be true? Let's make our hypothesis and test this claim. Notice it's about a mean this time. So for our null hypothesis, mu, I'm going to use the letter u because I can't type a mu very easily. 
mu is claimed to be equal to 3.5. For the alternative hypothesis, we're trying to show that mu is less than 3.5. So let's calculate a test statistic. To calculate a test statistic, we need to find a standard error first. The standard error is equal to the standard deviation of 0.03 divided by the square root of the sample size of 35. Once I have that standard error, we can figure out the test statistic. With a mean, the test statistic is a t-value. We'll take the sample mean, which was 3.48, subtract the claimed mean, which is 3.5, and divide by the standard error. That's going to give us a t-value of negative 3.944 for our test statistic. We're ready to find our p-value. Because this is a left tail test, we just have to do equals t.dist. Open a parentheses, select that t-value, comma. Give the degrees of freedom, which is 1 less than the sample size, 34, comma. And then we'll always say true with the t-distribution command. Hitting enter gives us a p-value of 0 0.000019. That's a really small p-value. Let's make some conclusions. First alpha, it says is 0 0.01. That's the smallest probability where we'll still believe the null hypothesis is true. Our p-value was much smaller than that. Because our p-value was low, we're going to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, which means we can conclude or interpret that there is sufficient evidence, because we were able to reject the null in favor of the alternative to suggest the mean number of pets owned is smaller than 3.5. That's our hypothesis test for one mean. But just like proportions, we can do a hypothesis test with two means. And actually, it can take two different forms. The first one is a matched pair. Let's say students took a test, then retook the test a week later. We want to know, did the students' scores go down? In other words, did they forget stuff because of all the time? So the first time they took the test and the second time they took the test. First time was a 41. Then they got a 21.2. Next student, 50.8. Then a 64.3. Next student got a 69. Then a 71.5. Then a 59, 49.2. Next student got a 63 and a 50.2. Next student, 57.4 and a 67 and a 68.2, and a 75.3. Last student got a 58.7, and a 49.2. When we're comparing before and after scores on students, we're not actually interested in the before score or the after score. We're interested in the difference. We need to calculate the difference for each, where we take the second score, or the after test, and subtract the first score to figure out the difference in their score. Clicking that bottom dot and dragging it down gives me those differences all the way down. And we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation of our samples. For the mean, we'll say equals average. The average score went down 2.4 points. The standard deviation of the sample, selecting the data, is 12.11. Pretty large standard deviation. Let's run our hypothesis test and see what we can learn. For the null hypothesis, we're going to say that the mean difference is equal to 0. In other words, there was no difference before and after. They didn't forget anything. For the alternative hypothesis, we want the mean difference to be less than 0, because we want the score to go down in this case. This is going to be a left tail test. For our test statistic, this is going to feel a lot like the test we just did for one mean, because we are doing a test for one mean focusing on that difference column that we had to calculate. So for our test statistic, first we have to find the standard error. The standard error is the standard deviation. We'll select that. 
divided by the square root of the sample size. There are eight values. Once we have our standard error, we can find our test statistic. And with means, the test statistic is going to be a t. We're going to start with the mean that we got, which is negative 2.4. Technically, we have to subtract the 0, although sometimes we don't write that because it doesn't really change. And then we divide by the standard error. Our test statistic t is negative 5.56038. For our p-value, it's a left-tailed test. So we can just jump right to saying the p-value is equal to. We're going to do a t.distribution, select our t-value, say the number of degrees of freedom, which is 1 less than the sample size. The sample size was 8, so we go with 7. And then we always say true. P-value is 0.2963, very large p-values. So when we get to our conclusions, if alpha is not given, we'll just assume alpha is equal to 0.05. Alpha is the smallest probability where we'll still believe the null hypothesis is true. Our p-value is much larger, so our decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So for our interpretation, we're going to say that there is not, because we failed to reject, sufficient evidence to conclude the students' scores went down after a week. Again, notice the, the interpretation focuses on the alternative and whether or not we proved that alternative hypothesis. So one type of test with two means is a before and after situation where we actually just subtract them and then do a one mean test on the difference. But what if we actually want to compare two groups? Let's say a sample of 25 men owned an average of 2.53 dogs with a standard deviation of 0 0.03. And a sample of 20 women owned an average of 2.49 dogs with a standard deviation of 0 0.05 at the alpha equals 0 0.01 level, can we conclude that there is a difference between men and women in dog ownership? Well, let's run the hypothesis. The null hypothesis, we're comparing men to women. So let's say that the average women, we'll put women first, is equal to the average number of dogs owned by men. For the alternative hypothesis, we're going to say the average of women is not equal to the average number of dogs owned by men. That's what we're trying to prove. For our test statistic, We have to first figure out the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are a little bit ugly with two groups, but we can calculate it using the formula that's given to us on the formula sheet. Be careful with your parentheses. It is equal to the standard deviation of the first group, which is 0 0.03 squared, divided by the sample size of the first group, which is 25, plus the standard deviation of the second group, which is 0 0.05 squared divided by the size of the second group, which is 20. Then we square that whole numerator and divide by, put parentheses around the denominator. And then we do 1 over 1 less than the first sample size, which is 24, times the standard deviation of the first group, 0 0.03, divided by the first sample size, which is 25. And that little fraction gets squared plus 1 over 1 less than the second sample size, which is 19, times the standard deviation. Oops, I missed a squared in there. We should always be squaring the standard deviation. So 0 0.03 squared times the variance of the second group, which is 0 0.05 squared, divided by the sample size, which is 20. And that little fraction 
is squared as well. And we close the parentheses on the denominator, and we get 29.577 is the degrees of freedom. That's the ugly equation that we have to use. So just be very careful as you're typing it in to Excel or onto your calculator. Another thing we need to calculate the test statistic is the standard error. The standard error is equal to the first standard deviation, which is 0.03 squared, divided by the first sample size, which is 25, plus the second standard deviation squared, divided by the second sample size. And then it's the square root of all of that. I didn't put the SQRT in front. The square root of all of that. So our standard error is 0 0.01269. Finally, we're ready to calculate our test statistic t. Our test statistic says we take the mean of the women first, because the women here were first in our hypothesis. So we have to follow the same order. The mean of the women was 2.49 minus the mean of the men, which is 2.53 divided by the standard error. And our test statistic is negative 3.15244. Let's find our p-value. This is a two-tailed test. So with the t-distribution, we can do t.dist.2tails to get the two tails. We just need to be careful that the x needs to be positive, or the test statistic needs to be positive. And right now, it's negative. So to offset that negative, I can stick an extra negative in there and then click it. And that'll change double negative into a positive, comma, select my degrees of freedom, and I get my p-value is 0 0.00375. We're ready to make some conclusions. Remember, we said that alpha is 0 0.01. That's the smallest probability where we'll still believe the null hypothesis is true. Then we're going to say, what decision do we make? Well, our p-value is actually smaller than the alpha. When the p-value is smaller than the alpha, the p is low, we reject the null hypothesis, which means our interpretation is that we can say there is sufficient evidence, because we reject it, to conclude the mean number of dogs owned by women is different than the mean number of dogs owned by men. And that's how we can test a hypothesis with two groups. There is one more test with two groups that we do, and that's a test of correlation. We're going to test the correlation coefficient of the following data. I copied some data into my table here that you can pause the video and copy down on your own, or you can just follow along for the example. We're going to make a hypothesis. The hypothesis is that rho, the null hypothesis, is that rho, which looks like a capital P, is equal to 0, meaning there is no relationship. That's what that means, no relationship. The alternative hypothesis is that rho is not equal to 0, or that there is a relationship. So to figure that out, we need a test statistic. Before we can figure out what our test statistic is, we first need to figure out what the R is that we're actually testing from our sample, which comes from equals correlate. Coral, we select the first column, comma, select the second column, and hit Enter. And that tells us the R. It looks like a very strong relationship, but we're going to test it to be sure. Our test statistic with linear regression is a T. So we will say equals. For the T, it's going to be the R times the square root of 2 less than the sample size. There are 15 data values in the sample size. 2 less is 13. And then we divide by the square root of 1 minus the r squared. That's the formula off your formula sheet for your test statistic. It's a really large test statistic. Let's see what the p-value is. It's going to be a two-tailed test again. 
But we can do that straight from Excel equals t dot distribution to tail. It's already positive, which is nice, comma. The degrees of freedom is 2 less than the sample size with correlation. So here we've got 15 values. 2 less than that is 13. And my p value is point, And that says e negative 7 at the end. You see that e negative 7? That means that I have to move this decimal point 7 times to the left. So there are six zeros. So this is point one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, and then 115703. Oh, that is a tiny, tiny p-value. So it's time to make our conclusions. Alpha is not given, so we'll just assume it's 0 0.05. That's generally safe to assume. The decision we're going to make, because alpha, the smallest probability, will believe the null hypothesis is true is 0 0.05. Our p-value was much smaller than that. So we get to reject the null hypothesis. So we get to interpret this to mean that there is sufficient evidence because we rejected that the alternative is true, that there is a relationship between the variables. Hopefully, you're noticing this pattern of these hypothesis tests. We define the hypothesis, we find the test statistic, we calculate a p-value, and we make our conclusion based on the alpha. This brings us to the end of our review. It is your turn to start practicing these. There is a practice assignment available for you. Ask your instructor as you have questions, and good luck on the final exam.